podcast. This one is on command this, when and how to use commands for your dog. This is really important because this comes off our last podcast, which talked about no, not being a command. And I also just had a training session with one of our peanut dog detection handlers where, you know, she's struggling a little bit on getting control and obedience and that kind of stuff. And one of the things is that they're very inconsistent in in their requirement for the dog to follow the commands that they're given and to understand rules and boundaries and all that kind of stuff and and one of the biggest things is obviously consistency and and so it's important if, for us to discuss this command thing because if we don't get a handle on this then we're going to continue to have problems with our dogs um, in in our house and out in public and when we are just going for a walk around the block and we want to say hi to somebody we want our dog to be obedient and not sniffing them in the crotch and tangling the leash around their legs and jumping on their child uh, that's in a stroller next to them and licking the chocolate off their face and that kind of stuff so uh, we're going to talk about commands on this particular issue and um, it's really important for you to kind of pay attention so i, I hope that i don't get too convoluted and go off on different tangents because i have that tendency to do that if you watch any of these uh, podcasts you know that i will go on a tangent from time to time but i'm gonna to try to stay focused and i'm gonna just really concentrate on commands and the first thing you need to realize and the commands are both verbal and nonverbal. Uh, as a matter of fact in our training the very first three commands we teach in our basic obedience class are nonverbal commands stopping means sit uh, when you when you are coming to line to the line where you're going to line up with your dog or when you're going to go to the door to begin to walk out or you're going to uh, begin your walk on your sidewalk you're going to come to a place where you're going to come to a stop and you're going to want your dog to sit that 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 action of stopping is the command to sit and if you're not in one of your cl our classes you may think that that's impossible uh, but you learn just like the rest of the people in our class have learned that Hey, the dog understands that stop means sit. And actually, it goes a lot faster than teaching the dog the verbal command for sit. And this goes for many commands. If you use your body language or what it is you're doing as your uh, command, your dog will learn it way faster than if you're trying to give verbal because we're kind of inconsistent with our with our words and how we say them. And you're going to learn a little bit about that later on. <clears throat> it's hard to be consistent, inconsistent with stopping. Uh, you can only stop so many ways. <laughs> you come to a stop. Uh, by planting both your feet and not moving. That is stop. It's hard to stop any different when you're mad. It's hard to stop any different when you're happy. It's hard to stop any different when you're not paying attention to something because stopping is just simply the act of stopping. Um, healing, you begin with your left foot. There's really no other way to start off um, uh, your walk with either, it's either going to be off your left foot or it's going to be your right foot. So if you consistently tell your dog that when I leave with my left foot, which is the one that's usually closest to the dog, that means heal. Uh, when I start with my left foot, that means heel, and you don't have to say the word heel. You start with your left foot from a stop position. That's telling your dog he needs to heal. Now, leaving with your right leg, it means stay, and those are the first three commands. So when you leave with your right leg, you're telling your dog to stay. When you come to a stop, your dog is, knows to sit, and when you leave with your left leg, your dog knows to heal. Very easy. Those are the easiest ones and the best way for me to teach uh, human beings that they do not have to be constantly talking to the dog and repeating commands over and over again. It's hard to repeat stop. You just stop. <laughs> And your dog sits. What we tend to do is we say sit, 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 sit. I said sit. And we begin to get mad. And that, that's what changes everything. All right. Your dog will begin to learn. It's about your volume. It's about your tone. And it's nothing about what it is you're saying. All right. So uh, verbal and nonverbal. Nonverbal are the easier ones and the best ones to train your dog in the beginning how to be obedient. All right. So here's some do's and don'ts do know what commands apply to specific behavior so you're going to pick certain commands that are going to mean these specific things like sit easy there's hardly any other way to say sit other than stopping all right um uh, down we often use more than one way of saying down sometimes we'll say down sometimes we say go lay down sometimes we say um, um get on the ground or you, you lay down right there and don't move. Um, and you see, we become very inconsistent of how we say it, where the down comes in the sentence, um, how we're doing it with our pointing, which a hand signal down is way easier to teach your dog than it is to tell your dog to lay down. All right, so you're gonna do different stuff and you're gonna use different body language and positioning to tell your dog to down. That's what I mean by knowing your dog, knowing what commands apply to specific behaviors. So pick one. Pick one of those things, and usually it, it, it can be pointing to the ground and saying the word 
just the word down. Don't say go lay down or lay down or good down or any of those things. Just say down and then follow through with a correction. The reason pointings work so well is because that's the same action that when we give a leash correction, it's kind of the same action. And so the dog will learn that, oh, oh here comes the correction, and they lay down to try to, they'll lay down before the correction actually comes, and that's how the dog learns to lay down. So pick one. Pick one word and pick one action in the beginning to teach your dog to lay down. You can later get a, away from the action and just say the word down, or you can just use the physical action to mean down, and you can uh, use those two different things. But that's it. Don't use anything else. All right, so have a specific command for a specific behavior. Don't change it up and don't use lots of different words. All right. Um, don't randomize your commands. Is, uh, so do know the commands and don't randomize your commands. Do maintain a normal speaking voice when giving a command, even when you are mad. Now that is hard, right? Um, and so when you're calling your dog to come back to you, you want to say here, and if he doesn't come here, then you want to follow through with whatever correction you use for your dog not coming to you. Uh, you don't want to only use the command here in a loud and very angry voice and then follow through with the correction. So that the only time that correction comes is when you've had it, when you're pissed, when you're really, really running late and you can't and you can't get a hold of your dog. And when he comes to you, you grab him and say, here, and he gets that correction because you're going to tie the correction to that level of anxiety from you, that level of anger, that that's when that correction comes. Because when you say here, when you're not angry, usually nothing ever happens. You say here, and the dog gets to ignore you and continue doing what they're doing, and then they wait for that action or that, that tone of voice that they recognize, oh, crap, I better get back, All right? And people say, well, he knows what I see. See how he's acting? He knew that he, what he was doing was wrong. No, he can tell that you're pissed <laughs> and very angry because you never follow through when you say here, All right? So you say here, the dog doesn't come, you go back, oh, you find the leash or the long line, whatever it is you're using to follow through with your command, and you're gonna say here, and then you're gonna give the correction. All right, you're not going to then say here and then give the correction. You you are going to give the correction when you're still using that same uh, level of, of voice. All right, and don't only follow through after you lost your temper. That is such a common mistake. That's the only time that we follow through with any type of correction is after we've said it ten times and we've got pissed and we get a a certain uh, tone in our voice and a position in our shoulders and we're oh, coming in there. And that's the only time when your dog will listen. He sees it and then that's when he starts running to you. What? I was coming. You didn't see me coming. All right. Uh, do correct from a normal position for your body, hands, back, and legs, all right? So whatever you are normally like, that's how you want to give your correction. Don't give it by riding the leash up around your hand and then raising your hands way up and then giving that correction. That's how many police officers give a correction when they that I've been training over the years. You know, they wind up and they give that really harsh correction. You want to be able to correct effectively from any position and do it in a way that doesn't lead up to all this extra shenanigans that you're gonna you're gonna do before you follow through with that correction it always has to be from a normal position with your hands down not from your hands up here or above your head or anything like that right from a normal position and do not wind up for that correction and that's like i'm going to bam and you get that correction because the dog sees that coming you're going to see that when you start to wind up your dog's going to begin to correct itself and go into a certain position you want the dog simply to listen to the command or watch whatever verbal command that you're giving and do it. You don't want them to wait until you do all these other things before the dog uh, follows through with the command. Do use the correct tools for your dog and you. So um, you'll see on some of the pictures, some of the dogs we have pinch collars, some of the dogs we have flat collars, some we have choke chains. It's because every dog and human being is unique and not every dog um, follows through with a command uh, and uh, and uh, the correction for not following through is not going to be the same because some dogs have different pain tolerance some dogs outweigh their handler by 100 pounds uh, some dogs are more distracted by other dogs and other cats than other dogs and so with a dog who's very mild-mannered a flat collar verbal command verbal correction are perfectly fine and you don't need to use anything else. You got, let's say, a strong Belgian Malinois who has a couple bites under his belt and he's, uh, let's say he's 90 pounds and our handler, you know, she's maybe 75 pounds and that's a little light. How about 110 pounds? And that dog can beat her just like that and pull her down on her face before she even says boo. All right, and you may need a pinch collar on that particular dog or a choke or something that gives you a little bit more oomph behind your correction. So everything is unique, but make sure you're using the correct one for you 
uh, and your dog. Uh, the same dog in the very same family with the dad, and the dog could be on a flat collar because he's big, strong, six foot, you know, 260 pounds, and he, you know, can overpower that dog very easily. But yet the wife is, uh, you know, very petite, and um, you know, uh, doesn't maybe go to the gym every day, and you know, needs something else for that same hundred pound dog. All right, so uh, like a pinch collar or something like that. So it's gonna the tool needs to be correct for you and your dog, and your two B. Do be consistent. Be consistent in all these things that we talked about. Do not, uh, you know, when you're uh, in the house and you're relaxed and you say something and you say, um, you know, hey, Farfing Nugent, I need you to, you know, down and the dog doesn't do it and then the dog, you know, gets to walk around and continue doing what they're doing and you, ah, forget about it. And the next time you say down, you're, you're all of a sudden, your your feathers are ruffled and you go there, I told you to down and you get really pissed. Now the dog's going to say, okay, I really don't understand this. Some days you could care less whether I down and other days you get really pissed off. And so that is a really wide range of inconsistency. Um, the other thing about being consistent is that if the, you know, uh, dad says down, that means lay down. If mom says down, that means lay down. If the five-year-old in the house says down, that means lay down. There's no exception. It's consistent through all the family. So the dog can't learn to ignore certain people because they don't have the uh, the respect that the dog the dog doesn't give them the respect that they deserve right make sure that everybody in the house um, maintains a level of respect and a level of love with their dog so that it stays consistent throughout the family uh, it can say it can say it's consistent whether you're laying on the couch or on your walk or in uh, rocking through a park or walking around the block it's always the same when you say down sit heal uh, whether it's through a, a physical command or a verbal command it always means the same thing that the dog has to do what you tell them to do all right, so be consistent. Very, very important. Your dog cannot be disobedient if you do not give a command. Oh, that is one of the best phrases that I got taught uh, early on in my career of being a dog trainer. One of our trainers uh, out of uh, Niagara Regional Police, uh, Bob Wright, he said this one day and it just, the clouds opened up and the light came shining down and said, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. Your dog cannot be disobedient if you do not give a command. And this is so important because if you realize that you have, say, you have groceries in your hands and you're walking up and you're, you're training your dog to uh, sit, stay, and you realize as your hands are full and the dog doesn't have a leash or a collar on and you're going to say sit and it's starting to come out of your mouth, but you know you're working on it and you're almost there, but you're not quite there yet, that if you say sit and he doesn't do it, then the dog is being disobedient. But if you know you can't do it and you really don't need him to do it, do not say it. Because the dog's going to file those things away. He's going to look at you and say, okay, because this is what dogs do all day long. They look at see what, what you're doing and how you're doing it and when you can follow through and when you can't. And they're going to say, okay, when their hands are full, when they have groceries, yes, they do this. Don't I, I, send me the emails and tell me this isn't true because I've done this for 30 years and I've seen it. A dog will see you in a certain position or a certain thing that you're doing and they'll say, hmm, in that instance, I know that they're not going to be able to follow through. I don't have a collar on. I don't see a leash dangling on. I'm not stepping on it. When they say down, I don't have to lay down or I don't have to sit or I don't have to do whatever uh, because they are like that and I am like this and I do not have to follow through. And the dog will begin to learn that that is part of the that is part of the uh, the fingerprint or that that's part of the formula that when they say down, I only have to down or down only means down when I have a leash and a collar on or when their hands aren't full or whatever the case is a, de a dog will pick this up you want to always be able to follow through you want your dog to begin to stop looking at the configuration you want the dog to begin to stop looking at what you look like when you can follow through and when you can't follow through that every time you say down you're able to follow through then it becomes a habit the dog will stop looking for all those other things and the dog will begin just to do it um, and uh, this is just so important to remember do not give a command if you are sure that you cannot follow through all right very very important oh i'm sorry i went on a i got excited about that one all right but if you do give a command make sure you can back it up all right so when you're ready uh, and your hands are free and you have a means of of, of uh, following through if a dog doesn't do it you say sit the dog doesn't do it you grab the dog by the collar or the back of the neck and you put the dog in the sit position and you make the dog follow through all right if that's how you can do it if you can't get a hold of your dog your dog will not do it by taking a, a hold of their you know behind their neck the skin behind their neck uh, or uh, placing them in the position or whatever it is that you do you can't do that then don't do it make sure they have a leash and a collar on all right so make sure that if you give the command that you uh, can back it up really really important you must be the same at home as you are in public and vice versa. Oh, uh, 
this is where we see some of our biggest problems, uh, especially in our training, because of course you come to training on our field over here or at a park, wherever it is we're training, and you are being commanded by us, you're being watched by us, and you, you simply follow through, you do everything we do because we're sitting there watching you, and you don't want to be embarrassed uh, in front of all the other students, and you do it consistently there, but then you go home and you don't do it the same way. And your dog begins to learn over at this field called Falco Canyon Academy or Falco Field. I have to follow through. I have to sit. I have to down. I have to not lunge and bark at other dogs. But when I get home or when I get to this other place, you know what? They don't care. They don't follow through. And your dog will begin to learn that in this situation at home, they're too lazy to do it because they're busy with their feet up on the couch or they're behind the computer or they're busy texting and they say stuff randomly and they go back to texting and they don't, don't cause me to follow through. The dog will learn. In these situations, I don't have to follow through, but when I'm at that field called Falco Canine Academy, I have to follow through, and it happens very quickly. And this will apply to anything. If you don't want to give your dog a, uh, a correction when you're in public because you're embarrassed, then the dog will learn that he doesn't have to behave. It happens with our kids too. If you have small children and you know that at home they know that they're supposed to do A, B, and C, or else here, here comes the hammer. Uh, but in at the grocery store, you're less likely because of uh, you know you don't want to smack your kid in in public, right? <laughs> so your dog, your child learns uh, that uh, in public they can do just about anything they want because you're not going to follow through and embarrass yourself, right? And so you got to teach your kid that you can correct them without anybody seeing, and you can follow through at any time, and you can always take them out to the car, right? Or you can always take them into the alley <laughs> or wherever it takes, but you're going to follow through no matter what. So the same as it is with our kids, we want to make sure and be consistent with our children at home and away. All right, so uh, this is just an example of what consistency will give you. This is my daughter. Her name is Vivi Ray, and that's um, uh, Bruno, a police dog who does bite work and does narcotics training. And you can see that she actually weighs probably a little bit less than he does, and he obviously has way more muscle tone than she does, and that dog can be pulling her over on her face at any second if he wanted to. And because we're consistent in our home with the training of this dog, the dog knows that no matter what human this dog is with, that she, he has to be obedient in that heel position of, of um, on the uh, the dog's right shoulder in line with the the right hip uh, the yeah the left hip the dog's right shoulder in line with the left hip of the human being is the heel position that's where the dog is supposed to be i tell people all the time that just imagine there's a ring coming from your hip and from the dog's shoulder now not on vivi ray because she's shorter than the dog but if there's a um, an antenna coming from the dog's left or right shoulder and it's sticking straight up in the air that you're trying to keep that antenna in that ring that's coming off your left hip that is really really an important thing if you could picture that that that's that's your goal then anytime it touches the edge it 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 it'll shock you and so you want to make sure and keep that antenna from touching that ring that metal ring that's hanging from your left hip all right so keep that antenna in there some people have really big rings like this size uh, we want your ring to be about this big off your left hip and that antenna coming right from the dog and just staying right inside that circle and as long as you do that and anytime the dog hits that antenna against the metal circle you're going to give the dog a correction that dog will learn to keep that antenna within that circle i promise you Look at this dog right here with Vivi Ray. And this, I have a video that you can see on YouTube where the dog is doing the same thing. So it's just I didn't happen to snap the picture right before the dog pulled her over on her face. There's a video that goes along with this picture, and you will see that that dog stays in that position with her when she's walking or running. And right here, see how her legs are crossed and she's holding on? That dog could take off and do whatever he wants with her and be on his way and run around. But he doesn't because we're consistent. It's the same with her as it is with me, as it is with my wife, as it is with my seven-year-old uh, or my 20-year-old, all right? It's all the same. This dog, a very powerful, strong dog, could do whatever he wanted to her right now, and he doesn't because of our consistency. Uh, here's our class, leaving with her left leg. To see that dog, uh, the, the, the center dog here uh, in the... Um, Nope, I don't have a cursor because I'm on a keynote, but um, the dog is taking off right when she's moving with her left foot. Uh, the dog right closest to us in the picture, he's looking at that, at that left leg moving, and he's going to be getting up as he's going out. He's a little bit delayed. Uh, you see the dog on the very end. He's already leaning forward. He's going to move because of the, the uh, actually the handler's leaving with the right leg, <laughs> and he's doing the wrong thing. All right, so we had to be obviously talk to them about that. No, you leave with your left leg. That's why the dog uh, is not healing or taking off when he should because he's questioning. Hey, what are you doing? You're supposed to be leaving with your left leg, knucklehead. All right. And here's another good example of a position. That dog's right shoulder is in line with the left leg of the handler. Perfect positioning. This is a pit bull, another very strong animal who has some dog aggression issues. And here it even works for chihuahuas. You see the chihuahua sitting there. Uh, she's standing still. She's come to a stop. The dog is in a seated position. Uh, because of that, she's able to get our certificate that we hand her for doing a great job. 
Even a Chihuahua can do this. It doesn't have these big dogs I keep showing you on our pictures and videos. It, it's not all about big dogs. This works for little dogs. All right, here we have a downstay. The gentleman across the way, he has his Chihuahua. The, the leash is on the ground. You know, Chihuahuas are very active. They run around, but he's not. Why? Because of consistency. All right, sticking with the plan. This is what you're supposed to do. You can't do anything else other than what I tell you to do. And don't forget, in the end, you want your dog to be a dog. All right, so we do all this obedience and we're gonna keep it up for about 10 to 15 minutes. But remember also that your dog needs to be a dog. So when you're on your walk and you've commanded the dog to be in a heel position, you've commanded your dog to stop uh, and sit when you come to a stop, or you're telling your dog to stay, that is all great, but also make sure and let your dog be a dog. Let him pee on a tree, let him smell the ground, let him eat some grass, let him uh, you know, uh, go at the end of the leash and kind of run around and be a little bit of a maniac for a period of time. Your dog is not a robot, so he needs or she needs that, uh, that opportunity to be free and to have fun and to enjoy life a little bit and then you bring them right back to that heel position all right you balance it out some dogs need more of that obedience some dogs need a little bit less so it's really going to be up to you to decide how much your dog needs but make sure your dog can be a dog do not make them be a robot all right so i hope this oh oh and we did have it works for the uh the our older members of our of our world too with the dog that they have uh and again there he is sitting there he's able to calmly have his dog out uh and the dog stays in that down position as we are sitting there uh talking all right this dog surely not very big but can be a handful for uh people who are challenged in in their balance and their walk as they get older and that kind of stuff all right so um again uh your commands follow through watch this again if you need to there's some very important very key points and, and secrets to our training that I kind of let loose there uh, that if you're not part of our class that you would not normally get but they're very key components so watch it again if you're not a regular member of our uh, canine academy all right hope all this has helped and stay tuned for our next one as soon as I can get it out I'll get it up and running and I'll announce it on YouTube or not YouTube on Facebook all right guys take care talk to you later bye bye